So you want to run a relative compression test, but you don't have an amp clamp? That's not an excuse. Let me show you guys how to use your scope going straight to the battery in order for you to run a relative compression test. Charge up your scopes, hook up your leads. Let's get ready. Let's hit it. Shout out to my buddy, PJ Walter. Thanks for the t-shirt, man. Looks great, I love it. Uh, check him out, Voltage Drop Diagnostics. All right guys, so today I'm gonna show you guys how to use your Mic Sig uh, 1104 four channel scope using two channels. Channel one is gonna be straight to the battery. Channel two is gonna be back probe to the ignition coil so we can have an ignition sync. So I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the scope. Then afterwards, we're gonna run the test with a known good, then I'm gonna create a fault, and then we're gonna review it. This way you guys can pause, play, try it on a car at, the, at home, at the shop, wherever you guys are at. So this way you guys can keep practicing with your scopes. Let's go ahead and get going guys. So the setup's relatively easy. Channel one is gonna be set to positive side of the battery and ground side here at the battery. And then, channel two is back probed into our coil. This is a three wire coil. So this coil is going to be getting a square wave from the PCM to trigger the coil. So all we're looking for is that square wave and that's gonna be our ignition event. All right guys, so looking at the home screen of our mic sig, uh, we have channel one, channel two, three, and four over here on the right hand side. Uh, right now I do have the scope on stop. I'll go ahead and press play. So let's go ahead and set up channel one and channel one is gonna be connected directly to our battery. So notice how here we see channel one, 200 millivolts, then we see a millivolt scale and a volt scale. If I wanna go up on voltage, I'll hit the volt scale. Now it's 500. It's not 500 for the entire screen, it's per division. So we have 10 divisions, so it's gonna be times 10, so that's gonna be five volts. One volt is gonna give us 10 volts. Two volts is gonna give us 20. We are doing a relative compression, so 20 volts would be sufficient. We'll click on channel one. So anytime that you're using the relative compression test without an amp clamp, we need to use our voltage in mirrored form, so this way it looks like our current. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to invert our channel. So we're gonna hit invert, and we're gonna leave the channel the same way. So notice now we have a line down here. Once we go to crank it, we should see voltage spike up. The next one we're gonna do is channel two. Channel two is going to be set to five volts. So this gives us 50 volts for the range. Why did I go so high? Because channel two is simply just our ignition trigger. So I don't want it to be all over the place. I want more room for my relative compression mark. Um, so we just go with the 50 volt screen so it's gonna look a lot smaller. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my um, time on the screen to one second. Usually for relative compression, you wanna do between one to uh, two seconds per division. And being that we are doing the mic sig, so we'll hit single, and then now we can run the test. So because we had it on single, it did the first capture and then it stopped. Now what we could do is we can hit the sine wave to kind of zoom in a little bit. So what we want to do here is first we'll bring up our triggers. So we'll bring up our toolbar, excuse me, we'll bring up our cursor. So we bring up the toolbar, we'll hit there. And what we want to do is we want to find relativity with our humps. So if I put my cursors here, all these humps look relatively the same. So I would say that these humps or this trace here is in good, um, good standing. So then we'll get rid of that. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up our degree cursors. You're gonna set the number of cylinders. If it's a different type of scope like Altel or Pico, this would be rulers and then 720. Now, what we wanna do is here, we're gonna take the zero degree marker and we're gonna put it at the trigger and then we'll put the other one at the next side of the next trigger. So now, if you guys can see, at zero degrees, we have cylinder number one compression 180 cylinder three, 360 cylinder four, and 540 is gonna be cylinder number two, and then it repeats again at 720 degrees. So what we're looking for is we're looking for current to go up, okay? In this case, it's inversion of current, which is voltage. We wanna see it go up because that's an indication that the starter motor has come in contact with resistance, meaning compression. So if we have a good amount of resistance that the starter needs to overcome, we know that that cylinder has a good amount of compression. So at this point, by looking at our 
waveform, we can see that all four cylinders are present. They all look relatively the same. So this, this shows that there isn't a mechanical fault. So the next video I'm going to show is I'm going to show um, with a hole. So you guys are going to see that there's a problem with the cylinder. Um, I want you guys, once you see the graph on the screen, stop it, analyze it, and then push play, and then I'll come back and give you guys the answer. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, we're with our scope in the exact same setup. We went ahead and pulled the spark plug. We're going to run the test, and then we'll let you guys know um, when to pause it so you guys can review it. I'll give you the firing order, and then you'll come back, and we'll go over the answer. So again, we're going to hit single. All right, so now that we have our one second capture, at this point, we can go ahead and start zooming in. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll bring up our cursors, and we want to make sure, again, that we're relatively even. So we're relatively even except for one individual hump, one individual cylinder. So at this point, we know that there is going to be a fault. So let's go ahead and set our degree cursors. <coughs> and we'll go to the falling edge right here on number one, and then we'll go to the next falling edge on number one. So the firing order on this car is 1342. Go ahead and pause it, analyze this, and then once you guys have an answer, go ahead and hit play, and then come on back and I'll give you guys the answer. All right, so now that you guys have looked it over, let's go ahead and look over our capture here. So cylinder number one is at zero degrees. Notice that we do have a compression stroke. Then cylinder number three is at 180. We also have a compression stroke. Cylinder number four at 360 has no compression. And then at 540, we can see cylinder number two, and then we repeat again at 720. So being that at 360, we have no hump, this is a good indication that we have no compression within cylinder number four. If you guys said number four, you guys are spot on. I pulled spark plug number four, and then I reran this test. So this right here shows that without compression in the cylinder, you're gonna get a low or missing hump. So if this would be the case on a car that you guys were working on, the next step here would be to do a running static and a snap test compression then do a leak down test to be 100 percent sure on what's exactly going on with that particular cylinder and that's it guys so hopefully you guys are able to see that now you don't need the the amp clamp with it if you already have a scope and you don't have the accessories with it it's not an excuse not to use it you're going to connect across the battery and that's all you need in order to run this test you don't need the amp clamps like we've used in the past if you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. If you guys have any suggestions for any other videos, drop them in the comments as well, and I'll see how I can help you guys out. If this information was good to you guys, make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button, so this way you guys get a ding anytime we drop a new video. These videos, guys, are to help you guys and to help better the industry one technician at a time. If we've done so, leave me a comment. If we haven't done so, leave me a comment as well, and we'll see how we can fix that. Till the next one, guys, signing off here, Oscar Gomez from SmartAutoTraining.com.